Hello, and welcome to the big show. This is Dim Lights and Stiff Drinks, the dive bars of Seattle. We are a podcast that visits local dive bars, historic taverns, and old drinking establishments. We are setting out to document those bars that have a seedy backstory and interesting history behind them. But best of all, we are actually recording these episodes live at the bar itself. For this episode, we are at the historic Virginia Inn, situated at the Pike Place Market. Kinda, right? Right. We're on the edge of the market. It's on the corner of the market. It's within market bounds. Mm-hmm. Half block within market down bounds. The street, okay. Most alley. We'll get into that. Okay. Well, it was it, it was somewhat up for debate, but it sounds like it's in the Pike Place Market proper. But we'll get to that. So my name is Brad, and joining me as always is our producer extraordinaire Bob Trombley. Hey now. So Bob, this we're kind of in your home turf tonight, man. Uh, you know, you live not too far from here, and when I first met you, you were doing the Pike Place podcast, of course. Yeah, that's right. So it kind of comes full circle. Comes full circle. Here we are. And then, of course, my two co-hosts, Lou and Jeremy. How are you boys doing tonight? Oh, doing great. I'm going uh, little, um, little DJ demolition. DJ demolition. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk okay. About why. Why that Gnarly. Okay, okay. And I'm happy to be here too, and especially this is special Dim Lights and Stiff Drinks because this is an after hours. This place yeah. kind of winds down at 8. Yeah. We kick everybody out, and then we. Uh, We're getting dangerously close to my bedtime. Yeah. 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 Luckily, we closed at 8, so all the old people can go to bed early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Out, of re- out of respect. Yeah, we're here late night. Late night. Well, so for tonight's episode. We actually have two guests tonight. Guest number one is an employee here by the name of River. How are you doing, River? Excellent. Thank you. So River reached out to us a couple weeks ago and, you know, invited us to come record here at the Virginia. And she's an employee here. She's really into the history of the place, which we love. And I got to say, you know, we have a pretty big list of places that we've yet to record at, but we're, we're planning on it. But when someone reaches out like that and rolls out the welcome mat and, like, is very passionate about the place, they get bumped to the top of the line. <laughs> so when you reached out to us, I was like, right on, we're here. So here we are. Yes, thank you, River. So, yeah, thank you for inviting us. Not quite yet at a place where we have to say, no, 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 no I'm sorry. Uh, we'll need to schedule you in maybe 2025, 20, 26. Like, our people will get back to your people. Well, it's pretty interesting how I got into the history of this place, too, because no one even really, not even the current owners really knew anything about the history. And so I've been kind of doing my own research. I went to the archives and dug around. I went to the library and dug around. I actually tried to find your book, and I couldn't find it at the library. Uh Uh-oh. So... You're going to have to make some phone calls. No, there. someone yeah. got it for me for my birthday. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Was it the Seattle Prohibition book? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, River, no. I might recommend going back to one of our first episodes of Pike Place Podcast. Jerry and I interviewed the former uh, owners, Patrice and... Jim and Patrice. Jim and Patrice. Yes. So we, we had to kind of touch oh, cool. a little bit of the okay. history on there in the Pike Place That's Podcast. That's awesome. It's for our fans, if you want some more research, Pike Place Podcast, Virginia Inn. Nice. So Jim and Patrice were here? They were the former owners. They were one of the yeah. former owners, yeah. The two, nice. They were a duo. They ran it for like yeah. 30 years. Yeah, tw- yeah. Since yeah 20 years ago. Since 1907. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying numbers. Yeah. Yeah, so what I thought, River, what I thought we would do is I'm going to go over the history of the place. And you sounds like you've done some amazing research. So you can help me kind of fill in the blanks and fill in any gaps that I'm missing. And together, you and I will go over the history of this place. Are you ready? I'm excited. Okay. All right, get a room, you two. Let's do the history. (laughs) We'd also like to introduce another guest. Can I introduce you sitting in? Yeah. Yes. Uh, We have a special guest today, Gordy, local bartender extraordinaire. I was drinking here in 1988. 88. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good year. Yeah. I just graduated high school. (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah. so I was also drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But we, we won't talk about <laughs> that part. Different experience. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, we're here at the Virginia Inn, uh, situated at the crest of Virginia Street and First Avenue. It has a long and colorful history dating back to 1903. So the Virginia Inn was originally a hotel bar saloon that was part of the Hotel Livingston, which opened in 1901. And then this place, the bar, opened in 1903, which I understand was four years before the market itself opened. Yeah, Yeah, so it predates the market. It predates the market. Yeah. 
And when it first opened, it was the Virginia Bar. So it was like the, the hotel bar, you know, hotels have their own bars. That's mm -hmm. what this place opened up as. It was, but it was like a saloon. It was your yeah, typical, it was beer and wine. It was beer and wine. Yeah. I wasn't able to find a lot in my research about its early years, like how it operated. Do you know much about it? Was it pretty much operating within the realms of the rules? Was there any shady stuff going on? That I've been trying to find out about that, like what was happening dur during Prohibition. That's been the mystery on my mind. Yeah. And I actually became friends with the grandson of the owner before uh, Jim and Patrice. So three owners ago, his name was Joe Rossi. His okay. grandson came in a couple weeks ago for a beer, and I was like, "Oh my God, you're his grandson! Wow!" And then recognize him by sight. No, he brought it up, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, not to like be a nerd, but I've been doing a bunch of research. I just found out about." your grandpa because he was like yeah my grandpa used to own the place and so I was like yeah not to be weird but I was just okay. looking at his obituary like two days ago <laughs> and oh, wow. so I was a little bit of a creep but we became friends he texts me stuff all the time about his grandpa and like his ownership of the bar because he also owned it for 20 years so what time range did his grandfather open operate it 48 to 81 okay and okay. so but <laughs> but during during that time too that was before this whole building was rehabilitated and sometime yeah. in the 70s, Joe's brother-in-law or whoever it was, a couple of them went under, so in what would be the basement, and they did find what they thought to be Prohibition era booze. Oh. Like some bottles. And so I think that's a good sign. Okay. Because they were a soda bar need, during Prohibition. You need to well, that on the menu. Now it's, and we know what that not, means. Yeah. You, you still have any of those bottles, those put bottles it on the menu as if you have those <laughs> bottles from the basement and people will yes. snatch at you. Well, yeah, it's true. Anything that was operating as, as serving a soda liquor before Prohibition was also doing it during Prohibition as a yeah. well, that's, old soda shop. Yeah, soda shop during Prohibition was nine times out of ten a speakeasy. So when Prohibition hit, that's what a lot of places did. They wanted to stick, keep in business, so they took down the, the sign indicating they were a saloon and put up a sign saying we're a soda parlor. You can go in and order a soda pop, but they could also add a little extra. Yeah, to your soda they pop. add a little something behind the bar. A little something behind the bar. Lime yeah. Lime Ricky. Yeah. yeah. Could you Irish Ginger up this coffee? Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of Irishing up going on. But it was interesting because I was researching this place uh, in the newspaper ar archives, and there was no mention of this place during Prohibition, which means one of two things. Either they were operating within the boundaries of the law, or they were just being really sneaky about it yeah. and they never got caught. It means one of those two things. Yes, but I also hear anything. I also saw something that said it was a card room. Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, it was mm. a card and game room. I know a lot during like the 50s to the 80s. It was even on the sign, on the neon sign outside. And it was kind of like the owner was definitely portraying that it was a card room. Okay. And the, the guests that would come here were known as the old timers. There are a lot of old retired guys kind of yeah. like living on their pension. Yeah. Living upstairs in, in the hotel, you know, or across the street before this whole kind of crazy gentrification stuff. And so one article that Joe Rossi's grandson sent to me was, it was interesting because they said anyone that was under 50 that would come in was referred to as like a juvenile. Oh, really? So it was like an old, it was an old timers bar, yeah. I, I've heard the same thing, that there's a lot of old timers drinking at these places on First Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in the, back in the day. Well, so it sounds like this probably was doing some kind of sneaky stuff during Prohibition, you know. That's the, like some booze probably that's was the being only sold. indication I have found is uh, like the third hand account of someone finding Prohibition era booze in the basement, which is now gone. The yeah. basement itself is gone. Oh, okay. Okay. Otherwise, I'd be digging down there. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'd be down there too, digging around right with you. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so jumping ahead to the 1930s, we got a couple good crime stories. So okay. cue the crime Satan's music. Satan's Pilgrims. We haven't introduced the house band yet, Brad. Yeah. We have a house band. What's their name? Uh, I forget. Help me, Lou. What, what's their name? Satan's Pilgrims. Hit us with some music. All right, so in 1935, a burglar used a chisel to break into here than the Virginia Inn. 
And once inside, he used the chisel to break into the cash registers. But to his dismay, there was no cash inside. They'd, uh -huh. they'd taken the cash out. Poor her crook. All that work. Right. Even back in the 30s, they were falling out, apparently. So, he didn't want to leave that empty-handed. Hell no. So, the best thing he could find was over 100 cartons of cigarettes, which he stole. I hope they're not German. But that's a weird thing. Like... The cigarette That's bulky worth of and it's cigarettes. It's hard to sell. I mean, what is he? Was he just walking around the street with like a Santa Claus bag on his back full of cigarettes? It I mean, those. Once you're in there, you gotta get something. You gotta yeah, get you something. Gotta give, you gotta give him a little bit of props for like, oh, yeah. Shit, I spent all this time getting in here. I'm not going out empty handed. But 100 <laughs> cartons of cigarettes. Oh, the cash 100 cartons? Pretty damn 100 cartons. They're selling oh cartons. Yeah. Yeah. You're acting like you don't have a fence for that. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine he broke in. He had an empty giant black sack with a big you know, dollar sign symbol on it. Yeah. Couldn't fill that full of cash, I gave hope, so... Yeah. You know, next best thing. Do you think he did have the black mask on? No, <laughs> sure. Like in the yeah. movies? The yeah. smoking bird. Black and white yeah. striped shirt. <laughs> yeah. Going down yeah. the street. Yeah. Hey, who wants to buy a car and cigarettes That's suspicious for 50 looking cents? at all. Oh, and I got a good one, too. So um, this is kind of like a catch-me-if-you-can type story. This is, a, this is a good one, though. It involves the Virginian. Catch-me-if-you-can. I've got 100 cartons of cigarettes and I'm <laughs> yeah. loping down the street. Was he also an airline pilot? <laughs> so this one took place in 1981. So Portland, Oregon, this limo company gets a phone call, and it, the, the caller's like, yeah, how much to bring me up to Seattle and back? round trip so they quote him a price he's like great come pick me up so the limo shows up picks up the guy and the guy is like looks on the younger side and he also looks apparently kind of short and the story that this rider was given the driver was that he was a champion midget wrestler <laughs> so he must have been pretty short but he was very convincing by all accounts and so the guy drove him up to Seattle they were driving around kind of taking in the sights got late and so the writer said, well, it's late. Instead of like driving all the way back to Portland, you know, in the middle of the night, why don't I pay for a hotel? I'll get you your own room. We'll check out in the morning, then we'll head back to Portland. So I was like, all right. So they check into this hotel. The next morning, the driver gets up. Who's not around? The wrestler. Any guesses? Yeah, the midget wrestler is nowhere to be seen. Uh -huh. So the, the driver, of course, is incensed. Now he's stuck with not only an unpaid limo bill. He got stiffed with the... He got stiffed with the hotel bill, oh, too. No. So he reports it to the police. An APB goes out for this guy, who for apparently... Unpaid, unpaid limousine fee? Yeah, yeah. Okay, APB. Yep. So the cops actually go out and search for this guy. They find him here at the Virginia Inn. He's at the bar <laughs> he didn't go having a drink. Low. <laughs> yeah. Hey, where were you? Yeah. I've been waiting all, all day here for you. And as it turns out, he was a 17-year-old. But he, had, he was so convincing, he even like convinced the bartenders to serve him alcohol. When they found him, he was drinking a cocktail. A 17-year-old said, I yeah. am a world champion. He was like smoking wrestling. cigarettes, yeah. had a leotard on. Why buy a fake? Yeah. What a, what a weird story, too, to well, come up. What was his goal? So, like, he just wanted to ride in a limo? I don't know. But the charges well, were over $3,500. To our limer drivers that listen to the show, get the money up front. <laughs> right? No matter how short he is or how acclaimed his wrestling uh, well, career I'm was. I'm sure now you got to give him your card. Later. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you. this was before cards, but I'm now I'm sure they give you your, you give him your card ahead of time. Wow, that is yeah. a cool story. But isn't that kind of yeah. yeah? So why don't you try that line in your next Uber drive? Like, oh, it's really late. Uh, let's just go get a hotel <laughs> yeah. and then we'll get, we'll get back on this trip tomorrow morning. Oh, scary. Yeah, yeah. See how that goes. I'm kind of surprised they found him here, though, at the Virginia. Like, of all the places to find him, and why would they even look here? They, were, they might have been doing a yeah. sweep of the market of all the local maybe. establishments. Oh, all maybe, the maybe. Dives. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, one of the 1980s big Virginia customer. Yeah. Um, wasn't uh, even willing to leave after he stiffed his limo driver. <laughs> yeah, right. 1981 is also when it swapped owners, That's so maybe right. the owners were just oh, so busy they didn't no. even. Oh, Couldn't even think to card them. There you go. Or maybe they were enamored with uh, midget wrestling, and they were just yeah. honored to have one. And you know, maybe it was a good buddy of the old owners. That's right. Mm -hmm. I can't say I wouldn't 100% maybe be fooled. Uh, 
<laughs> well, back in the wrestler. I'm back extremely day, gullible. Gattaca. We appreciate I mean, your like, honesty. Like, yeah, yeah. Offend the person, right? So he's like, sure, okay. I might ask to see the belt though, the championship belt. So. Oh, yeah, good call. Well, River, as you mentioned, 1981 was when kind of like a modern chapter began for Virginia. But to really appreciate what happened, we have to go back a couple decades to really kind of appreciate the change it went through. Because starting, I would say, in the 1960s, definitely through the 70s, First Avenue here was a sketch fest. It was full of, they called it <laughs> Hustlers Avenue or Flesh Avenue. It was- Prostitutes, I think you're talking about. Well, it was like strip clubs, uh, adult bookstores, pawn shops, pawn shops, pawn shops really before. seedy taverns. Times Square, yeah. 70s style. Yeah, it went, it went way back. It was- What was the, uh, Gordy, what, what, what was the donut shop down there on First and Pike? Wasn't that, the, there was a, can, can you talk tell about, you about <laughs> I can tell you about oh, that you if you want. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll, yeah. No, the guy the guy who owned the uh, donut shop, kitty corner from the from the market, where the t-shirt shop is now. He used to he used to have runners, young kids, who would steal stuff from the department stores downtown. And and oh, I, I he I would put that he would put them in the basement and then they would sell them off all the time. He ended up he ended up getting indicted and sent yeah, to jail. Yeah, 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 he got caught. I remember that. But if you just if if you just if you just, if you just walked in, you just got a donut. Yeah, you would know. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. idea what was going on downstairs. Yeah, but yeah, that that was First Avenue for you back in the day. So it was a really seedy place, and the Virginia Inn had kind of like blended in with its surroundings, and it had become, also become somewhat of like a seedy tavern. It's not at all like the place we see now. Right? Yes, you'll see the pictures on the Instagram. This is uh, brick and paintings, and yeah, it's not, it, nice. With, uh, yeah, it definitely High wasn't that back wood, in the 60s and 70s. All the way around. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like what we were talking at the I beginning. Class. There's a lot it of old timers here drinking that the day. back here. People that lived here in kind of like flop house hotels. Seamen. Certainly did. It was like a, present, was like a Charles Bukowski novel. Everything. Like First Avenue was just like one Bukowski story. Well, you know, our listeners might be listening to what we're talking about now going, wait a second, this doesn't sound like a dive bar at all. What the hell's going on around here? And it's true. This is not a dive bar. Not now, but it, it was. It used to be. It used to be. The rich yeah. history of this is why we're here. Yeah. Well, look around now, but it's saying, was. man, this place yeah. is Super gorgeous diving. right yeah. now. Yeah. But it's got the awesome telltale hands. I'm like, okay, I can see what this place yep. was back in the day. Yeah. Exposed brick walls is, you know, yeah. indicator number, number one, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's not immaculate. Right above my head, there's a giant hole in the brick and some insulation hanging out. So it's old school. Yeah. There's some diviness. There's well, some diviness here. You could really see it in that movie Singles that yeah. takes place in Seattle. They have a scene at the Virginia Inn inside at that table over there, That's wall right. one and two, and then on the outside as well. And uh, Sleepless in Seattle also comes yeah. seen here. No kidding. Yeah. Which so, scene? Was it the one where he was talking to Kira Sedgwick? Were they, was it a date? Are you talking about in singles? Yes. Yeah, what was the scene in singles? Do you know? Do you remember? What? It's not the one with uh, when the band was hanging out. No, it's uh, Actually, I think that was probably like a central. couple making out on one of the tables. And then um, and then there's outside, too. You get a really good scene of the, okay. the classic kind of iconic neon sign on the outside. Okay. So yet another example of how Seattle invented edgy 20 something movies. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then the Pike Place Market went through a renovation starting in the 1970s. And this was basically a part of that renovation because in 1981, two guys, Patrice and Jim Fotheringham, am I pronouncing his name? I think so. Last, does that sound right? took over ownership in 1981 and transformed the place into basically what we see today, which is kind of a casual bistro and bar, champion Northwest microbrews, local artist, and a menu that can best be described as Pacific Northwest bistro food. 
So compared to what it was like previously, the menu has become a little fancier, the crowd is more touristy, but the vibe is still very laid back and definitely embraces its historical heritage. My name's Craig, I'm one of the owners here at the Virginia Inn, along with my partner Carl, and uh, we, uh, we took over the tradition in uh, February of 2019. That's right. Nice. Nice. It's been, it's been fantastic. So I had had a beer here before in the, in, in the 90s when it was just half of, the, half of the space that it is right now before the full kitchen was, was in. Oh, wait, you're right. It was, that it was, was it, yeah. right? It was yeah. narrow and the long. The bar was against this brick wall right here, and it was just beer. No, jump ahead, bro. And a lot of, a lot of cigarettes and <laughs> a pot of gumbo. Mm. And... <laughs> But the same seven or eight characters here and so i came in at 21 years old looking 14 and had a beer and uh then wandered down to the frontier room and there was a woman named <laughs> nina that was a bartender there and uh, i remember her gla grabbing a juice glass and filling it with ice and i'm 21 i asked for a vodka cranberry or something and uh, that's vodka, exactly vodka, what I asked for. Vodka, it was, vodka, yeah. vodka. So it, it was it was a little floater of pink on top, uh, nice. was yeah. sinking down to the bottom, properly poured. Uh, yeah, and I look at it, and I looked at her. Her knuckles were on the bar like this. She looked me dead in the eye and said, "Would you like something else?" <laughs> And I grabbed the drink and I sipped it and I said, thank you very much. Thank you. And, walked away. and, and um, I bartended at Belltown Billiards in 90, oh, 1994 as place. the oh, yeah. day bartender. Oh, Anyone yeah. ever go there during the day? Yes. Uh, do, you know, do you know Ross? Uh, well, this was... He had a ponytail in his own pool cue. And okay. he was there all the time. There, there were, there were a, a, a few regulars. I, I did more stocking of kegs and cutting of fruit there, but I did uh, kind of cut my chops on how to, how to you know, uh, make scratch drinks. Before that, I was in a service bar in hotels, and so never had real people to, to deal with. And where I didn't get a lot of people, I definitely cut a lot of fruit and learned how to make scratch drinks. That's cool. And then... Uh, Worked a couple night shifts and decided I couldn't do it. No. So you, you walk into the Virginia in a fresh 21, have, having a beer, and looked around, thought to yourself, I will own this place. No, absolutely not. I'd never even yeah. had worked in a It was more like, I think I was 24 die. years old. I, uh, I worked in the timber business uh, from when I was 15 until I was 24, and then uh, got out of that. All my fingers. And a uh, couple, couple busted up hands. But, uh, so you looked around the Virginian 21 with a beer in your hand, thought, no, yeah, good bones here. Look at those timbers. Look no. at those, look at those no, beams. Absolutely not. Sweet. In 1991, I was walking down the street being like, like looking over my shoulder, wondering what the, you know, you know, Seattle's an up and downtown. Yeah, it is, it is an up and downtown. It's definitely taking its, its ups and its downs. Oh, yeah, 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 we were just yeah. talking about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I remember Pioneer Square, the same thing. Oh, yeah, Ups for and sure. Downs there. For and sure. In the early 90s, Pioneer Square was where you would want to be. It was Exactly, safer. yeah. You, know, you could get in all the bars. The joint cool. cover charge. The joint cover charge. <laughs> yeah. It was cool. And, and the bars ranged from divey to nightclub-ish. To historic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you historic. got the whole gamut. Yeah. 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 And then Belltown and this part was you didn't really want to go there and by the time was especially after a certain time of the night yeah like, yeah like dark <laughs> yeah 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 pretty and, much <laughs> yeah. um and in this area i don't really remember the two bells was you know nice. always, yeah. always kind of a hit yeah um they had a good burger um, and robin hitchcock would play there every time he was in town Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah. Really? Two bells? I saw him there a couple times. Really? I missed him a couple times. If he was ever in town, he would play two bells. Was it just like an impromptu concert? Yeah, yeah. He huh. would have like other people, show people up. from Grantley Buffalo. Yeah, if ever he was in town and on the off night of the show, he was probably there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, since show. you're the owner, I had a question. So, is the bar back... Is that the original bar? Not of the Virginia Inn. It's not, okay. And I'm sorry my business partner isn't here. I believe he knows a little bit more about it. The bar does date back to the 1800s, and I believe it comes from a bar east of here, Montana. Oh, okay. Maybe don't. This but they shut that around. Do you have any idea cave. if it's a uh, Brunswick? I do not. Okay. I do not. Okay. Uh, the previous owners, uh, Jim and Patrice, they, yeah. they took over in 1981. Okay. And so they were responsible for the expansion and, and yeah. buying that bar and bringing it in. And they really left us with such a such a tradition uh, here that to uphold. Okay. You know, 
you know, they, they had, that's a long time to own a restaurant, and then to see it through all those changes, and it, we're just, yeah, we kind of feel like we're caretakers of it. When yeah. You, when you think of all the all the bars in Seattle, you know, yeah. Vito's, Vito's was one of my favorites for years uh, there on, yeah. on, on Madison. They might reopen. There's yeah. rumors. You know, and, and that, and, you know, the Blue Moon. Iconic. I stuck my head in there a couple times. Number yeah. 13, North, North Lake Tavern yeah, correct. was, you know, a fun place. But Divey, the Streamline Tavern, uh, yeah. the bottom of Queen Anne for years. I lived, we visited uh, there. I lived uh, right around the corner from that. And the yeah. Streamline was fun. And then Targi's up on top. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah. they had, they Season had, met, so seven. yeah. So, you know, <laughs> we've done a Streamline yeah. and we've yeah, done was, a Targi's. There bars like that, that you could just kind of like, be walking on a semi-residential street Maybe yeah, and right. just boom there, boom, there it is. Yeah, and you're, you walk in, you're like, you're kind of blessed in having that. Oh, yeah, there used to be bars like that on Roy um, back before. I mean, in the late '80s, early '90s, they were kind of yeah. smaller like that. And I can't remember the names yeah. of those, but I remember going after like Bumper Shoot or something back when I was just turning 21. All right, yeah. and that is what I really appreciate about this, the history of this place is that it's been in business since 1903 continuously but it's gone through all kinds of different versions of itself like it's reinvented itself a few times and who knows what's down the road but i love that about this place you know what is interesting to me what confused me for a really long time which actually got me into the history is you know it's 120 years old this year so i thought i would look into it and i was looking at old pictures mm -hmm. online and i saw this one from 1977 of the neon sign on a different building and oh. i was like what the hell is going on here the virginia Virginia in neon sign on a different building. It was cited as being at first in Virginia, but I was like, no way, I've never seen that building. I don't know what's happening here. And so I got really curious. I was like, I gotta know. I was like, what is happening? And so- You went down the rabbit hole. I went down the rabbit hole <laughs> hard. And so I eventually, I went to the archives and I went to the library and I eventually realized through the archives that in 1977 this whole building had a giant rehabilitation, yeah. right? So during the kind of urban renewal phase of the market in the mm -hmm. 70s. Yep. And during that time, the Virginia Inn had to relocate. Because I was wondering, I was like, oh my gosh, was there another Virginia Inn? Was there a sister yeah. restaurant? I was like, what's going on? Oh, okay. But temporary location on First in Virginia, half a block away, in a building that has now been demolished. It's kind of funny because when I was digging around at the archives, I learned that they moved to that building for one year and continued to serve people and continued to have a, like a card room with punch boards and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> nice. I didn't punch even know boards. what a punch board was. Okay. <laughs> but, Call back. <laughs> yeah. Deluxe Bar and Grill. Yeah. And then while they were in that building, they got a notice from the owner of the building. This whole move was a huge deal. But they got a, a notice from the owner of the new location, the temporary location, that said, you got to move out. This building's being demolished. You have 60 days. And so days. they got that letter at their new location. So they're like, what the hell? And so by the time it was about to be demolished, they were able to move back into the, the original space. Oh, wow. Yeah. But imagine getting that letter, like, move out of your temporary space. Yeah. We're demolishing it. And it is now demolished. Well, that could be the end. That's the end of the Now, was there a plan? Was there a plan all along to temporarily move and then come back here? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. It was kind of amazing they were able to keep it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it was Probably amazing was they were able to keep it in the same area because at first they wanted to, like the urban redevelopment plan or whatever, wanted to move them to like Ballard or something. And they were like, no way, ain't gonna work. Uh, yeah, we're a downtown bar. Yeah. We're not a Ballard bar. Yeah. No diss against Ballard bars, of course, but, no, you, gotta put your foot you know, like, downtown bars are uh, what here. they are. Yeah. Yeah, we're not talking Ballard Ave. We're talking 15th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is an interesting story about it. started off with, like, wait a second. That's not the building of the Virginia inside. What the hell is going on? And it turns out it wasn't the building. Yeah. Or kind of was, but temporarily and... Isn't it fun to research that and actually solve whatever riddle you're yeah. speaking out to it? Because I got everyone here wrapped up in it. I was like, hey, guys, have you seen this picture? What the hell is going on? And you finally I found even, the answer. I even That's wrote cool. the Pike Place Market newspaper, and I was like, does anyone know what's going on in this picture? And they didn't end up publishing it. They published something else weird that is I that wrote. Is that the PDA's newspaper or the Scandalous Scallion? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> so the Pike Place Market newspaper, I wrote the like uh-huh. the scandalous yeah. scallion With Megan like, Lee. part of it. Yeah. Okay. And so shout out to Megan Lee. Shout out. That name. Who is Meg, that name? Sounds familiar. She is runs the Scandalous Scallion, the market newspaper. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Scandalous. Scallion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. Of the scandalous kind. <laughs> well, really cool. So. Um, it does it, sound like the good name of a drink. Yeah. I'll, bartender, I'll take yeah. a Scandalous Scallion. Please. Or if you're me and Brad, the rocks. last drink you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not fans. Don't like onions. So, if, any other stories that you came across during your research? Yes, um, I have a favorite image. I believe the image was taken in 1905, so shortly after this building was builded, and then after the restaurant opened. And so it was very shortly after. Anyway, there's an image of a Chinese immigrant sitting outside in a boat with a fishing pole. And what he's on doing First on First Avenue, what he's doing is protesting muddy streets. And the, mm. the image is really cool. Like it's Mr. super Mayor fun. Mr. Fixes yeah. potholes kind of thing? Because, yeah. yeah, because yeah. They, the potholes in the muddy streets were so bad yeah, the back then that he protested by sitting <laughs> in the there. muddy streets with this his boat. Shit, Mr. Wow. Mayor. Yeah. Huh. Muddy streets. I wonder if the protest worked. I have a whole Virginia nice. Inn photo album on the my The pre-pavement phone. days. Yeah. When it was, the roads were literally mud. And now, with that behind us, I think we're going to take a break for round two. So, uh, Satan's Pilgrims, take us out. All All right, right. Satan's Pilgrims, thank you for bringing us back in. Yeah, thank you. We're back for round two. And uh, so, of course, Jeremy, our beer gourmand, is going to walk us through our next segment. What you drinking? Well, you know, we've got a lot of stuff we've been talking about with Virginia, and we got into the history of it. We were talking about Brad and our, our special guest, uh, River, and the, the deep history of the Virginia Inn and how it has evolved from started off as a pub and is now a very classy restaurant uh, and kind of talked a little bit about like why are we even here in the first place if it's not a true dive bar and, and it is we'll give it a pass well we already that broke that glass ceiling exactly right so if you got history you're a dive bar <laughs> if you were ever a dive bar you're a dive bar well you, kind of you gotta have the dive bar history I did find a book at the the library that was titled like Seattle Vandalism or something like that and it was just pages and pages of a different vandalism that was in the bathroom and so much of it was credited to the Virginia Inn like this was written in the men's room this was written in the women's room all over this book just Virginia Inn bathroom Uh, graffiti yes pretty cool in the Seattle I would buy a whole book of that Mm. yeah well, that's impressive. We're going to see if you get some of this shit on the Instagram Wow. Page. Yeah, yeah you sure. got a lot of numbers to call tonight, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. It is called, it is called Seattle Graffiti. Okay. The book. Hey, you plug. I'll have to remember nice. that one. All right, so we're talking about what you're drinking. Um, there's a lot of commonalities with what's on tap and in the bar here in Virginia. And we talk about it with a lot of the dive bars. But this is definitely more of an upscale selection than we typically see in a dive bar, which is cool. But it's still got some of the classic Seattle dive bar telltales for what's on tap, which is great. And I love one, hyper local. Got all, yeah. everything local. Yeah, I noticed West that. Stuff on tap, which I love to see. Yeah. Very much a, a Seattle kind of thing. So that's very cool to see. And we don't have it on tap, but we've got available uh, in cans. Rainier 16 ounce tall boys. So Rain duck. Good shout out to the you know, yeah. classic staple for dive bars uh, again. Those Gotta have the cans. Yeah. <laughs> definitely some uh, higher end stuff that we don't typically see in the dive bars. We've got a Maritime Pacific old stove. Brewery out of, um, I want to say, right down below. High Place? Yeah, I, was thinking, I was thinking east over like in Leavenworth, but no. High Don't Place Breweries, right? Yeah. Damn yeah. Western. Yep. Below one, Western. One call out about Old Stove, great brewery, but also their tap handle is fantastic. The name Old Stove, and their tap handle is what? An Old Stove. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know, like do you a know, wood burning stove kind of party? Do you know what that tap handle is? 
I did not. Oh. Wow. It's, it's J-Dog, it's not a noose. <laughs> Mind blown, huh? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll post a picture on the Instagram page. Okay. It is a handle for lifting the lids of an old stove. Shout out for the cool cool tap handle of yeah. old stove. Yeah. So what did you uh, pick to drink tonight? I'm drinking a sea pine citrus IPA, which has actually been on tap at a couple places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sea pine is like has a pretty big profile, I would oh, say. Yeah. Well, we see, I, didn't see them yeah, a lot. They're popping up like mushrooms. Say that for sure. Two things, two things on You're tap. Having a both a sea pine citrus IPA and a Black Raven Trickster IPA. Both two brewer, two local breweries. Yeah. Pine, Black Raven out of Woodville, sea pine out of Soto, right? Over the last decade or so, both those breweries have exploded. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've yeah. seen them in more and more places, definitely in more of the dive bars than we did with the podcast. For sure. Yeah. And uh, no complaints here because they're both fantastic. I love them. They still have my uh, favorite drink. Yeah. Jameson on the rocks. Jameson on the rocks. All the way to Ireland. Yep. You ship it back around the Cape with the bar. <laughs> yeah. Was that what you were drinking uh, at St. Patty's Day recently? Uh, yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Of course, okay. That's a good point, too, that, you know, again, a little more upscale here at the Virginian than we typically see. Uh, you flip the uh, menu over, and you not only have you got a pretty good tap list, you've got uh, you know, a, a good selection of wine, but a very impressive cocktail menu, which is kind of cool to see. We don't yeah. often see that a lot in the dive bars that we hit. Yeah. Nor do we see duck cone fee. One of the bars that we hit. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Bistro food. <laughs> and some champagne in the menu, too. Nice. Class up the joint. I had some chowder before we started recording, and it was delicious, so I can attest to uh, the River quality of the food. Do people order the duck compete? Not very often. There's a couple things on the menu that, um, you know, at the bottom of the menu that cost a bit more, but when they have it, they go nuts for it. <laughs> They're crazy about Mama it. Mamma mia. Really? A lot of people order the fish and chips. That is what the Virginia Inn right now is most known for. Really? Also, we are generally... Best uh, fish and chips in town, by the yeah. way. They are killer fish and We're chips. also oh, known as like sure. a very celiac-friendly restaurant. A lot of oh, what's nice. available is gluten-free because the previous owner, Patrice, was celiac. Okay. Oh, and wow. so fish and chips is always gluten-free. We have a gluten-free fryer. Ooh. A lot of items in our menu are available gluten-free. That's really cool. Can under 21 people come in here yet? Cause yeah, on this side. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Family friendly. There, yeah, there's the bar side and there's <laughs> nice. the restaurant Bring side. Bring your kids in for the, uh, for the duck confit? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We don't have the duck confit, yeah, he, but they... Yeah. Uh, we do have a kid's yeah. menu. Yeah. <laughs> Celiac. Uh, Is the duck confit on the kid's menu? Fish and no. chips. Oh, I'm here for that. Aw, no. a baby duck. <laughs> 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 Well, what's everyone? So you're drinking Jameson. I'm also drinking um, the Citra IPA Very popular from Sea Pine. Yeah. Very popular. River, what are you drinking? I have also got the Sea Pine. You got okay. Yeah, so Sea Pine's popular. I like popular. it. We have two IPAs on tap. We have the Sea Pine and the Trickster. Yeah. Trickster. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what you're drinking. Gordy's all about that Trickster. Do you like the Black uh, Black Raven? Do you like their stuff? This IPA is beautiful because it's clear. It doesn't have all. You don't like the oh, hazies. You don't like the hazy stuff. Like, I don't yeah. like the yeast. In my hazy is very popular right now, but some people, yeah, yeah. some people prefer a clarified beer. Yeah, yeah. Don't like all the crap floating around in there. No. Whatever. What about half of Well, you because like it because it affects you in the morning. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> drinker's fear of here. Okay, yeah. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything that we have on tap is local. We also have a couple of rotating taps. We have a hellbent saison. We yep, have there you go, Jeremy. Yep. second place we've been to with a Saison on tap, which very unusual for yeah. a dive bar. Maybe not so usual for a very awesome restaurant like Virginia, but yeah. another beer style that it seems to be gaining in popularity quite a bit. Saisons and sours, right? Yes. Uh, we also have Standard Brewing's Brown Ale, uh, Stoops Porter, and we have a Republic uh, Cider, like a dry roast biscuit cider. Okay. Wow. That's that one's gluten free. Nice. Oh, is it really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yes. That's cool. Okay, you guys. Yeah. All right. I, tell, us, I, tell us more about this. I, someone, uh, one of the owners died here at one the Virginia the Inn. Owners died. One of the owners oh. died here at oh, the Virginia so ghost, Inn right? in the office. Gotta be a ghost. There has been rumored ghosts. So from what I heard, ever since I started working here, there has been a rumor like someone died here. There was never any evidence to back it up. So it was kind of like, whatever, like that's Wait. probably not true. Maybe and what was not. the story? Like he he had a heart attack in the office or something like that? Yes, exactly. Okay. And so it actually happened. No so there, well, I, I did find out more about it and I was able to confirm that someone did die here. So 
So it, someone lost their life. Are you here. are you on the ghost tours? There is I wish. of the market. Well, now. But it was one of the owners, and he actually died in the presence of the other owner. And what happened was super interesting. I that mean, my dad? very cool. So previous owners were Jim and Patrice. Owner before that was Joe Rossi and Elizabeth. I forget her last name. But she was part owner, but she was never here. She never, like, kind of did anything because she was the wife of the owner that died here. So Joe and his partner bought the Virginia Inn, and then that partner passed away of a heart attack in the office. He was Joe's best friend. And, you know, what happened, what he saw shocked him so much. Like, you know, his best friend died in his arms at this place that they just bought. So that's like a huge Whoa. deal. So, but what Joe did was really cool. He signed on his widow as the part owner and took care of her for the rest of her life. So she was, oh, nice. so she was part owner for the rest of her life. And so, yeah, he took care of her, which I think is that super is cool. cool. Yeah, so there's like, cool. a, you could see on the paperwork, her name is on everything. Like when I went and looked at the archives. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, Joe kind of ran it by himself though. And what wow. what archives did you visit exactly when you were researching this place? The Seattle City Archives. Okay. Yeah, did you did you go there in person? Yes. Yeah, it's that's an interesting experience, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Did they just hand you boxes and let you like go through it? No, I was emailing them before and I kind of told them what I want. They only okay. had like three folders about okay. the Virginia Inn. Okay. Yeah, that's a it's fun to go through. You're you're, you're talking Brad's sweet spot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Historical research. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into the next segment. All right. So where are we at? We are at Pipex Market, right? Oh. We're one block down the hill from Victor Steinberg Park. For our listener that doesn't live here, it's more of a filthy little peach of piece of grass than a park but it Which does is under major construction as it, we speak it's all it is, dirt now it, it's under major construction yeah. but it is a perfect landmark that you're now entering pike place market and that's yeah. where we're at we're at the market it's the second time we've been at the market the first time we interviewed charles finkel at pike brewing correct mm -hmm. yep one of the og johnny apple seeds of craft beers yep. throughout the country yep everything starts in seattle the only reason I keep saying it is because it's true. We invented beer. We invented markets. We invented sketchy parks. Thank you. Yeah. So let's do a quick market by the numbers. It was opened in 1907. Uh, 1907. It's by far the single most popular tourist attraction in Seattle. More than the Space Needle. More than any of the other things around it at the Seattle Center. And it's the 20th most popular tourist attraction it, in the world. Oh, my Actually, goodness. The world. It's so damn easy to get to. And right. they almost wanted to tear you, it down at one point. They You're did. a tourist. You ask a local, uh, how do we get to Pike right. Place Market? Go to Pike Street and go <laughs> all the way to the end. And there it is. All right. You guys want to play a game? No. Let's do it. No. Satan's Pilgrims, hit me. We're going to play I don't know shit about 20th oh, no. tourist attractions no. in the world. Hit me with some game show music. All right. <clears throat> What's in the top ten? We'll run it around the horn. I'll give you a clue or two. Nine of the you, top ten. Yes or international? Shh. Nine of the top ten are in the U.S. Oh. Three of the top ten are in New York. Bob, most popular tourist attraction in the world. Hit me. Stonehenge. <laughs> Brad? <laughs> Times Square. You are correct. That's number two. River? Uh, Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower is below Pike Place Market. <gasps> oh, really? yeah. Jeremy? Uh, Empire State Building. Uh, nope. Ooh. Bob? The Rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> the Rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> All right. I didn't know any of this stuff either, so I'll just uh, let you know. Grand Canyon. There you go. Good one. Good one. No, that's yes. below Pike Market. All oh. the stuff you think of that is... Uh... Anyway, Pike Market has 10 million vi visitors annually. Uh, let's go to the top 10. Times Square, Central Park. Okay. Uh, Good one. Two Disneylands. The number one most popular tourist attraction in the world is the Strip in Las Vegas, which mm. is kind of a cheat. But anyway, Pike Market is just behind the Basilica in Paris and the waterfront in Hong Kong. And as far as whose butt we kicked, we're more popular than the Zocalo in Mexico City, a bunch of Disney parks all over the world and in the US, the Louvre, the Great Wall of China. I don't know, is that crazy that more people go to Pike Market than the Great Wall of China or the Apple Tower? Well, like I said, it's way convenient to get to the Pike Place Market, less convenient to get to the Great Wall. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know what that Uber 
right? It is to get to the Great Wall. It's fucking expensive. Fair enough. So uh, domestic uh, United States tourist attractions rule because there's a ton of people here visiting. Sure. And there's a ton of people here already. Makes sense. So it's really cool because the Pike Place Market, and they're like those other place I mentioned, it's not an architectural marvel. It's not uh, an amusement park. It doesn't house the most important artwork really in the world yeah that, it's a farmer's market disneyland doesn't count disney disney world doesn't count anyway we can yeah. skip over that shit count? it's a farmer's no. market. it's a place where if you Wait. work here you might get a call like hey honey farmers can you go to the market tourist attraction in the world yeah number 20 Dang. people well, would rather well, go to let's not forget oh, bob help me also out. 500 residents live here and call this place home within these seven acres that's absolutely right there's a ton of nonprofits here. There's 500 residential units. There's a child care center. There's a food bank. There's, there's a, a dentist, senior center. There's health care. It's a community within a community. It, it absolutely is. <laughs> That's totally right. But, yeah, it's kind of cool that uh, all this other uh, stuff in the market is just here. Is there, are there petitions circulating to have them secede and become their own nation? That is correct, Jerry. I'd, I'd vote for that. I'd sure. sign that. All right, so um, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Let's do uh, name some of the businesses in the market, Bob. Pike Place Bar and Grill. Pike Place Bar and Grill. Gordy. Athenian. Athenian. Oh, good. Lowell's. R- Lowell's. The, Athe- the Athenian Wait, was, bars is the only two uh, years younger the than, the, than the market itself. That's right. Yeah. I like Orange Dracula. Down, downstairs. Yeah, little, little the new, down under. New school, right? Yeah. yeah, new school in the down under. Nice, nice. Uh, the mini donuts. Mini donuts, thank you. <laughs> Gordy, what else is in the market? Roasted cashews, thank you. Well, I would say Three Girls Bakery. Three Girls nice. Bakery. Shout out to Jack and Lou. Nice. All right, Reverend, your turn. Still in the market. Yep. Uh, rummage around, rest in peace. Wow. Even nice. RIP yeah. rummage around. Nice. Jack's Fish Bot still around. Nice. And Choice Produce since we're there. And the Creamery since we're there. Shout out to Nancy Nipples and Dylan. Nancy <laughs> yeah. Nipples and Dylan, thank yeah. you. What's the name of the comic book store? The Golden Age Collectibles. Yeah. There's one of the oldest head shops in the country is here. Yeah. Jeremy? Pipe Place. Pipe Place, Place. Market. Uh, nice alliteration. Much. Uh, there's a ton of there. bookshops, uh, Lionheart Bookstore, yeah. Left Bank Books, uh, BMF, oh. which is a nice acronym for books like a, like a motherfucker. Right. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Bob, describe Left Bank Books to someone who's never been to Seattle. It's kind of as it says in the title. Left Bank. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not Right Bank. Anarchist Anti- Bookstore. Yeah. It's an anarchist bookstore. Yeah. Two and two together. But Pike Place... And why are they called Left Bank? It's because the Left Bank in Paris is where all the is where all the anarchist bookstores are. Yeah. Came from. That's cool. Thank you, Gordy. Really? Yes. Nice. That's why it's called Left Bank Books. I had no idea. There you go. Uh, Jeremy, you're a car guy. There's a Hot Wheel shop in the oh, market. Oh yeah, for sure. And what's that called? I don't know. Miniature car dealer. <laughs> Are you going to talk about the magic store? And how that's the longest running magic store in the nation? I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, it, some of these businesses that we've, been, that we've talked about, though, like for someone who has not been there, one of the cool things about going into the market is there are these awesome businesses, but they are hole in the wall businesses, right? So these are little shops that you go into, and there's not a lot of those that really exist anymore in this country, right? This is one uh, an awesome collection of these little hole in the wall businesses, like like we mentioned, that are just super fun, just to go in and experience. Yeah, very and niche. If you're not interested in the hot wheels or the bongs or the, the <laughs> left wing books or whatever. The magic, the magic store. And that's what, that's what pulls in, you know, the billions of tourists every year. Nice. Gordy. You know, the most secret spot in the market. Ooh. Market magic. The alibi room. <gasps> yeah, nice. Oh, good call. Yeah, good call. They have, they have the best pizza all over the market. And actually in town, and if and if and they have the best deal for pizza. If you come before six o'clock, all the pizzas are half price. Oh. 
And Ooh, you know, nice. you know the history. Of Happy Alabama, hour pizza, probably y'all. Probably better than anybody. And right? the owner like, Corey one of, is wonderful. One of well, the reasons it's such a. So I know the old owners. Yeah. Before before Corey. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's a great time, though, because we talk a lot about the speakeasies and how some of the dive bars that we love used to be speakeasies around Prohibition time. And the Alibi Room has you, an awesome history. You of, go down there, you look at the floor, you look at the ceiling. It's all old-time wood. When I was at the Athenian, they accused us of causing leaks down below us. <laughs> oh, no. Why would you and do so that they, on purpose? So they made it they made us jackhammer up our floors. And when we jackhammered up our floors, it turned out dead bodies. That, no, it turned out it turned out that the timber below the cement floors that we had were 2 by 10 original wood from up on the hill, up on Skid Row, mm -hmm. side by side by side. So the entire floor was two, two inches wide and 10 inches deep all the way through the entire restaurant. <laughs> Can you even imagine how much wood that is? Yeah, That's pretty thick. Yeah. Well, Seattle's first right. industry was lumber, and so everything was made with wood, which <laughs> no, is a, sure. a huge exactly. reason for the you Great mean, yeah. Seattle Fire. Yeah, and you mentioned <laughs> Skid 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 Road. I mean, it was named Skid Road because yeah. they skid all right. those logs down there. And I can't stand the fact that people that people around the country talk about Skid Row. Right. It's Skid Road. <laughs> no, it's that Skid was, Road. That Sebastian was Sebastian yes. Buck. That was that was Yesler where they skidded the trees down. That's right. Yep. That's true. It's Skid Correct. Road. It's yes. not Skid Row. All right. Let's wrap it up remember. with our top ten, top twenty. Yeah. Hot, you, like whatever. Did you go? Did you go through the whole list, Lou? Uh, no, you guys did it all. Um, yeah. I could talk about. Um, there's a couple times it was almost demolished. We just the had 60s. the 50 year anniversary. Yeah, um, Victor Steinbrook, uh, he was an architect who was yeah, friends, friends of, the of the market. They were the champions that saved it in the 70s because Brad was about to say it went into disrepair. It was yeah. a shithole. Yeah. But they lots still of, lots said, of wharf rats. Lots of wharf rats, but they still said this is an honest place in a phony time. Yeah. Because they were going to rename it Pike Plaza, which would mean leveling everything, high rise parking garage, high rise apartment building, high rise office buildings. And uh, they were just furious about it to save this uh, thing that was falling down. And I down. believe Steinberg right? was quoted as, uh, quoted as saying he, was, he wanted to preserve the scruffy character of the market. That's right. They wanted yeah. to not only preserve the buildings, but preserve the character of yeah. it, which is it's basically a farmer's market. It's not hoity-toity. But the uh, mayor at the time, Dorm Brahman, called it a decadent, somnolent fire trap. <laughs> decadent, somnolent. Yeah. Well, I like scruffy it's better. It's decadent. It's Scruffy's sleepy. It's a fire trap. Can we get rid of this already? But... Uh, <laughs> The friends took to the streets and got enough signatures to put it on the ballot, along with Victor Steinbrook and a lot of other people, and they won. And the city will ultimately invest $50 million into renovating it rather than leveling it. So, shout out. Yeah, shout out to the friends. Shout out to the friends of the market, the people that saved it. What else do you want to know? Uh, you know Pike Place Fish Market? In the constituency office. I don't know if you know who the constituency is. But in the constituency office, we have books that document all of that stuff yeah yeah and you can come down and borrow them anytime you want as long as you bring them back it's definitely one area of seattle that has a pretty rich documentation history unlike a lot a lot of other areas in seattle that you gotta you gotta dig to find the real juicy stuff high place market's got a pretty good legacy yeah and, and no one ever well talked about throwing the fish ah we, we talked about fish market. <laughs> no, talk about throwing the fish. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who knows Seattle who doesn't live here maybe watches a football game where they're in Seattle, yeah. and they go out and they take some exteriors for commercial maybe breaks. Free Willy. And you're always going to see a person throwing a fish, right? Yes. Uh, which they still do to this. They day. still do it every yeah, time. 
Er Aaron Andrews, sideline reporter, go catch a fish at the market, like, every time. Do you think that looks bad on us? People are like, <laughs> no, it's part of the there's gimmick. nothing going on in your town, you're excited by people throwing fish? Yeah, it sells. Yeah. It's marketing. Did you ever watch Free Willy? I did. <laughs> it was the guys from the fish market who threw the fish in the, in the movie. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. They were trained for that position. Many, many <laughs> movies that have cuts of the They of threw the a fish whale? Well, they were tossing the <laughs> well, salmon no. to the whale. Don't talk, don't talk, to, me, uh, don't talk to me about uh, Sleepless in Seattle because uh, I was there. Yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> all right, that's all we know. All right. All right. Uh, Bob, Jeremy, you want to take us out? Ready to wrap it up? Ready huh? to wrap Gordy, it up? any uh, last words of wisdoms before we uh, wrap her up here? Um, no, we... But we need to. We definitely need to continue this dive bar, yeah. dive bars of Seattle. Well, we've got we've got other dive bars in the Pike Place Market neighborhood on our list. Yeah. So keep listening. Probably this season we'll be visiting some more again. I would love to hit the Alibi. Yeah. Technically on our list, but I think but we can, we can it should it be. Yeah, you need to you need to, you need yeah. to do the Canterbury. The Canterbury great one. That is def, that is one on the list for sure. I was thinking we should do one of the first out darkened window bars on the What's the uh, joint? What's the improv oh, like uh, down in the I've heard yeah, the the Sonyas, there. or what are we talking about? Here? I don't know. Yeah, well, Moles has a very. Cool They're probably selling even there with those bars that you're, you you would never go in. Oh. Well, the the Athenians <laughs> been there. The market was <laughs> the mar the market was yep. formed in in Absolutely. in 1907. The Athenian the Athenians been there since 1909. Yep. Two years later, and there have only been three owners in that entire time. The Papadopoulos's owned it in 1909, up until about 1956, when the when the they were they were bought out finally, and then when Louise Cromwell finally died, then they have their current owners. So in in over 110 years, wow. they've only had three owners. The Papadopoulos's and the Cromwells. All right, Satan's Pilgrims. You've heard all of <laughs> enough of English names for tonight. Let's Thanks wrap it up. All. Knock it on the head. Thank like, you so thank, much. Thank you, River. Tap on thank the you. To River for making this happen. And thank Come you, Gordy. Come visit me at the Virginian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Come get some duck confit. Fish and chips. <laughs> and fish and chips, more importantly. And chowder. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody.